Okay, guys. Okay, let us start. Good morning, everyone. So uh, I think so. Everyone is doing good. So and it's still it is Sunday morning, and uh, I think that a lot of people will be sleeping. <clears throat> okay, right? Because it's still Sunday, right? So all the technology, uh, all the people who are working, almost Sunday is the only uh, free day what they get, right? Even me too. Friend, for uh, like the thing is, we are supposed to learn new things daily, and uh, as part of our uh, uh, learning strategy, we need to according to our time schedule. We are supposed to learn only on the day of Saturdays and Sundays. That's the weekend schedule what we have, right? So that's fantastic. Like a lot of contestants are joining, a lot of participants are joining. Okay, let them join. Okay, so uh, so in the last class, in yesterday's class, we talked a lot about one of the important services in AWS Cloud Practitioner. Uh, I would say for the CCP level, uh, one of the important service what you want to choose is nothing but your yeah. Uh, what can you say? Uh, AWS EC2, which is Elastic Compute Cloud. Why? Because those uh, Elastic Compute Cloud is the one of the important service, and uh, what can you say for all of the service you're gonna learn uh, in your other certifications too, like for your developer and for your solution architect, like for your uh, machine learning specialty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The integration of EC2 at the various circumstances is very, 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 very important for us. Okay, so uh, as part of we learned a lot about it, and we talked about the volumes, the EBS volumes. We break down to the chunks, and we talked about what EBS volumes is all about, and we talked about EFS, the Elastic File System. Moreover, then we moved out into the security groups. I would say the security groups, the one of the important security measure. You want you have we have to uh, get it down when you are learning about the AWS concept, and we talked about the load balancing and auto scaling groups, and we had talked a lot of nuances inside it, right? So we talked about each and every key part, and uh, we also seen some what can I say, uh, kind of uh, uh, a part of things understanding how replication works and a lot of things to uh, estimate, right? Okay, so today, uh, like we have done with the covering the server service, like I would say the compute services which is needed is done entirely. So today, we are going to start with one of the important other uh, concepts of service, other category of services, which is called as storage. So where we're going to take two important strategies or two important concepts over here, sorry, two important uh, let me say partitions over here. One is all about storage another one is all about databases so today we're going to talk a lot about databases and i'm going to give you the vast number of what may say uh database services what we have like of some nuances and i want to give you an instance that these database services are one of the important database what may say where if we want to be in another like if you're going to uh, move your career into in the next part of an aws you are supposed to know some of the uh, like integrations and uh, since a lot of people are working in pre right? So one of the important thing in pre-sales and uh, those who are working in the uh, early works like they want uh, uh, like want to working in the data part. So right now they are working in the data on the on premises. So a lot of things which be happening inside the databases. Why? Because they need to know about SQL. Like they need, uh, like they want to know any and only one of the RDBMS uh, things like the MySQL, SQLite three, Postgres SQL, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And those who are working in the NoSQL databases. They want to know about uh, Mongo if you were a well versed and MongoDB is one of the one of the uh, what can I say uh, popular NoSQL databases. What we have and then other other uh, other databases too, right? And now uh, I think so. If you were aware about the technology uh, standards, now uh, generative AI has been a very more what can I say the concept which has been evolved over here, and you may get into the concept called as vector tables. Where you have to store your what can I say chunks of data. So that vector table now all the cloud service cloud providers like AWS, Google, uh, G, the Google Cloud, as well as the Microsoft Azure, they are trying to keep another uh, series of databases to store those vector uh, vectors inside it. Why? Because they have been having a support embeddings, and that's a very huge and vast concept. But for all those things, you need to know about the basic understanding of how. AWS has their basic database services. Before going into the database services, you are supposed to know about another one more thing called as the storage one. Why? Because so far so go, you have learned only one kind of storage service. I would say that there are two kinds of storage service. 
you learned about block storage and you learned about file system storage where you learned about elastic block store one of the thing which has been used over there and the elastic file system where, where file systems like ntfs nfs fat32 fat16 were integrated into it and to make sure to work in the times of aws you have seen those things and you also migrated from uh, what may say uh, yeah, efs2 uh fsx right fsx has been used for third party file system which has been available proprietary for your windows and linux and mac etc etc but so far so go you have seen the files has been stored in terms of blocks the files has been stored in terms of file system everything but what is going to be the next thing what is going to be the next thing we are going to work on it. okay so let's see Guys, I think you can able to see my screen, right? Just someone quickly answer. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So today, what we're gonna see is that we're gonna dive into the deep of the S3, where uh, as far you have seen AWS around, you have seen that Amazon S3 is one of the important. Uh, I would say the second most important servers in terms of AWS CCP level. Why? Because uh, the two major services which cover the lot of integrations is one of the one of the service which covers lots of integrations is nothing but your S3, where you can use S3 if you know the concept behind S3 and if you know the working procedure you have behind S3, you can just make sure to integrate those uh, integrate the Amazon S3 in your architecture itself. When you are building an entire architecture from scratch, from the user's point of view to the database storage point of view, uh, the, and you might use a lot of other services too. This will, S3 will be the one choice you will, if, I, even I will be keeping in my mind. Like when, when I'm starting to build one architecture, right? and I'm starting to build one architecture, I need to store something else. I don't want to store it as another thing. And my mind first comes to the service called as Amazon S3. So before go like, so before, uh, I've said a lot about it. Now, what is the key concept behind S3? Let's see. So simple storage service. So simple storage service, I would say one of the important service in Amazon uh, Web Services. And uh, besides your database services, what you have in the Amazon Web Services, simple storage service like S3, you can able to store your objects, which is nothing but your files inside directly inside your S3 stream. So, so one of the building blocks of AWS. And I would say in simple storage service, you would like to be giving a word called as infinitely scaling storage services. Let me give you an instance. So let's have, I'm uh, having a file. This file uh, size is 30 gigabytes. Now I'm trying to store this in S3. Now I'm going to get another file, which is around 150 gigabytes. I can store in S3. And if I'm getting another file, which is size of around 1000 gigabytes, I can store in S3. If it is going to be one terabytes, two terabytes, for 100 terabytes, et cetera, et cetera, goes on. I don't want to care about the thing I can able to store inside S3. Besides, if you want to store all those things inside your, um, what may I say, inside, inside your uh, other database services, you are supposed to scale, you are supposed to scale it accordingly to the, according to the size of the data, what you have, right? And, Many websites use Amazon S3 as a backbone. And as I said, you can also use Amazon S3 as an integration as well. Okay. So make sure to think about it. So where we're going to learn about another important concept in the next two coming slides. Now I said S3 is one of the storage servers. Now you might ask question, where we are going to store the, S where we are going to store the files. Okay. Which is nothing but termed as an objects where you're going to store the object. That's a very important thing, right? where the container, I would say it as a container or in a buck, uh, I would say it's in a container where you can able to store the objects in the simple storage servers is called as bucket. I think so might get familiar with this name. So bucket is the container which is used in simple storage service, which is um, preferably called as S3 to hold, to store your files, right? So before going much into the buckets as well as the objects, let me give you some of the use cases where Amazon S3 might be used. First thing, you can use it for backup and storage, disaster recovery, as I said. And uh, now we might get to question. So whether we can able to, uh, what may I say, 
whether the S3 can be used in, some, uh, in terms of disaster recovery. So you might come to a mind, right? We need to deploy our S3s in two regions or two availability zones. Yes, we can do, but able to do it. But how to do it? Let's get into the uh, concept one by one. And you can also archive it. Okay, I'll so I will show you how to archive it, guys. I'll try to put each and everything in terms of use cases in our times of services. We may be able to understand it, right? And you can also use it for the hybrid cloud storage, application hosting, and more importantly, I would say application hosting rather than you can make sure website hosting. Make sure to put it as in website hosting. You can also host your application, guys. I'm not saying that you don't, you can't able to host your application, but most prominently. Website hosting, the one of the important thing S3 can done, uh, media hosting and data lakes and big data analytics. You guys know about data lakes, like uh, since the data has been huge enough, the size of the data is huge enough and big data, the the, the five Vs, if you were aware about the five Vs. Okay, uh, if not so, we'll try to cover this five Vs in this today's session. And you are supposed to analyze it. Why? Because the, if, when the uh, data, size of the data is too small, it is very easy to analyze. Okay, even with the help of our, even with the help of a naked eye, we can able to analyze it. This row, this column, uh, this data, that data, we can able to analyze it easily. But when the size of the data is too large, too uh, too large, then how can you analyze? So S3 gives us the capability to analyze the data in a very bigger scale. And software delivery and static website. As I said, you're gonna host your website, right? So you can go with static website as well as you can go with uh, dynamic websites too. But most preferably, they will put it in the terms of static website hosting. Okay, so to give it you more precise, like I'll share you this, I'll share this PPT once. Uh, I'll share this PPT once the uh, 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 thing ends. So, in terms of like the customers review. So first thing is all about the Adidas. The parent company of Adidas is using S3 Why? because when they started their shoe companies, right, to uh, sell the uh, food trays, their data is too huge. They haven't come to a conclusion where to store the data about the like the user input, right? When they're collecting the user input. Now the parent company of Adidas has been moved to Amazon and they are pre predominantly using Amazon S3 uh, to store their data. So you can use the website and you can just see how the case studies has been working on and how the companies using Amazon S3 and Amazon for their particular uh, company's perspective and Shutterstock too, guys. So how they're trying, like the Shutterstock is nothing, but, so they are also using this Amazon S3 where they try to migrate the data from their on-premises to the cloud nature and more preferably they are trying to use S3. Okay, not only S3, other uh, database services have been used, but most prominently what they do is nothing but for the migration service, they scale up according to the infinite resources what they have in, in their on-premises services. So looks like there are lots of other, lots of companies, like I've just uh, taken two examples, lots of other companies are using, as I said, Netflix. Like my Netflix can be able to store their files, like their video files inside S3 too. Yes, they can also store that thing. So infinitely amount of large amount of storage. So it might give you another instant of it. Okay, but S3 has a lot of features. S3 has a lot of security reasons. You need to follow up that before getting into storing the file inside S3. First, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh -huh. Just give me a minute. Okay, guys. Okay, so let's get into S3, which is nothing but Amazon S3. So uh, let's get into uh, uh, S3. And uh, as I said, one of the container which is going to store all the files is called as S3 bucket. And I want you to give you an instance after uh, the uh, after I uh, go through the uh, S3 objects. So the container which is going to use to store your objects or which is going to store use to store your files is called as S3 bucket, right? Which is called as, called as S3 bucket. I would say it as a directories, like, but actually the word directories should not be used, but I'm trying to use directories for your better understanding. So user need to store their files. Why? Because you just go and you want to store your uh, file inside your laptop or in, in, your, in your system. What you'll do, you'll create a folder. Inside the folder, you'll start, start putting into it. That folder is nothing but the directory where the directory will contain. It is a containers to use to store your file. The same way in terms of Amazon, in terms of S3, the bucket is nothing but the directory which is used to store your objects which is store which is used to store your files and must be unique uh unique name around global so the thing is let me have you an instance so let me have a lot of regions are available us east 1a us east 1b 
etc there are a lot of other regions are available i'm asking you since s3 let i mean i've been mean giving you an instance i'm going giving you a perfect uh, clarification okay so s3 is nothing but a global service why because it does not dependent on s3 does not dependent on any other regions okay whether it depends upon mumbai region whether it depends upon uh, us region it doesn't doesn't depend upon it but please please understand it clearly the packets what you create from the s3 is region specific and they are region specific and i want to give you an instant that when you create a bucket like let's say i do have one two regions over here when you create a bucket in s3 when you create a bucket in us east one let's say there is an already a bucket in us one b with a name called as abc now there is a fact that you can't able to create a bucket with the same name called as abc since the bucket name has been already taken by us east 1b but you can ask the question us 1b us east 1b is another region us east 1a is another availability sorry uh, us east 1b is another availability zone us east 1a is another availability zone they are not even mismatched so and you have said that s3 is a global service why can't i have the same name as it that's where the, the that's where the security measures come to an existence why because since s3 is been a global service around and we can able to see across all the regions we have all the accounts the name should be unique but in case that if the name can, if, if if since if the name is not unique like you can take any other names then we can the user from all the different from the different accounts can able to access your accounts without your permission even though you have lot of security measures inside s3 but unfortunately since the name is not unique the name has been repeated the other users can able to access your s3 bucket without any permissions they needed so that's why is uh, amazon aws has been more you know more keen in that let s3 has been a global service around all the regions what we have and all the accounts what we have but the buckets what we create are region specific and the bucket name should not be repeated even around the global so around the global it should have only one unique name with one unique bucket clear guys clear so far why because you need to understand this concept uh, why because my uh, i i've seen a lot of uh, students asking this question why since you have said that s3 is a uh, guys can we have the question at the last why because we need a lot of things to solve okay we'll have the question at the last okay So we need more explanation on this again, please. Okay, we'll try to have it at the last. Okay. Well, because there are a lot to cover. Okay, so we'll do that. And as I said, buckets are defined at the region level, and uh, S3s are global services, but the buckets created are region specific. As I said, as as I said to you, and what are the naming conventions to be followed in while you are creating your S3 bucket? There should not be any uppercase. There should not be any underscore. and the character length is more specific you need to have within 3 to 63 characters of length and you should not have any ip as your bucket name like 192.168.2.253 should not have any ip ip as your bucket name and must start with a lower letter lower case letter or it's a number like how you create an email a password for your email accounts you might follow some conventions to create your own password right the same thing for creating your bucket name AWS has given some naming conventions where you are supposed to follow that. Okay, and you're not must start with XN. Ah, uh, XN. Why? Because that that represents other AWS policies what you have, and it not must end it with S3 allies. Why? Because this also represent the S3 roles, like S3 IAM roles. It will represent those things. So you can't able to put that as an IAM, put that as an bucket name to it to it. Right. So far. Okay, I'll explain you why the unique name around global and uh, everything. Uh, maybe after the objects and after the things has been covered. Okay, yes. Now, first part has been done. The first component of S three has been done, which is the bucket, the container. Now we need to know about what are the files which is being stored inside the S three bucket, which is nothing but the objects. The convention naming convention has been given in terms of objects. So. the files which is stored in s3 buckets are termed as s3 objects and these s3 objects will have and s3 objects are nothing but your keys which will represent your entire path let me give you an instance i am going to have a bucket over here 
let's say the bucket name is ABC123. I'm sorry, I'm le I'm going without uh, conventions. So ABC123. So now I have the bucket name like this. Okay. Now what I'll do is nothing but I'll store an object inside it. Okay. Now the object name is nothing but XYZ. Now what happens over here? Now I want to access this object. Am I right? I want to access this object. I will write to put it in another color. I want to access this object. My major thing is nothing but since I have stored this object inside my S3 bucket, I need to access this uh, S3 object. How to do it? So as I said, the full path, the path of the object will start with S3 with double slash with the name of your bucket, which is ABC123 slash your name of your object with this XYZ. This will represent the key which is nothing but the objects fill path, okay? Which is nothing but your objects fill path. But instead, you can also go with other ways too, okay? I'll try to put it in another way. If I'm going to have a bucket, let's say I'm going to have a bucket, but inside that, I'm going to have a folder, okay? I'm going to have a folder. Inside this, I'm going to store my object, okay? So the same bucket name is ABC123, and the name of the object is XYZ. Okay, and this folder name is sample. Okay, I'm going to have this folder name as sample. Now, what is the instant? Now, how can I access this object? That's my question. How to access this object? Now, as I said, the object's full path will be prefixed with S3 colon double slash and the name of the uh, name of the bucket, which is ABC123. Since it is present inside a folder, we need to give the folder name, which is sample and the name, the object. Clear? So this will represent the key and this will represent the key will represent the object's full path. Clear guys? Clear so far? But because you need to know about how objects should be accessed. And uh, let me try to give you an, uh, what can I say, how to store an object and how to uh, use this, uh, what can I say, uh, URL for your uh, major things. Let me try to uh, go over to the management console and I'll uh, give you an instant. So, uh, this is all about your objects, guys. Why? Because this object is very, very important. You need to know. And key. Key is nothing but, as I said, key is going to be prefix plus your object name. What we have done so far, key is nothing but the prefix plus the name of your object. Prefix is nothing but this. Prefix will consist of the S3, uh, S3 double slash colon plus your name of the bucket with the object name. And don't, and that's what I've said, right? So, uh, as I said, now you might get a question. Why? Because in the second example, what I just said, you might get the question. Uh, you have said that there is no concept called as directories in Amazon S3, but you have created a folder, right? Actually, the name is actually the convention is not called as directories. Okay. For to make you to better understand about how S3 works, like a lot of uh, what may say, uh, concepts has been put over there and the directories has been changed. Okay. And, uh, what happened is nothing but a lot of other learners and a lot of other instructors, what they put, what they, what they term is nothing but they are actually look like a directories. Like I'll show you how to, uh, how the S3 objects will look like and how the S3, uh, S3 buckets will be stored. Okay. Why? Right? Because the other learners and other instructors, they, what they suggest is nothing but they're not actually the concept of directories. They actually is nothing but the working location where the location can be subfolderized and they can have some other subfolders too. Okay, please don't take it to the concept of directories. They are nothing but sub sub organized way of right uh, sub organized way of uh, storing your S3 objects. But I think so. It will make it will not make you sense. But please try to make sure that you don't have a concept of directories inside your S3 bucket. Why? Because you can't, like there is no concept of creating any. Uh, there is no concept of directories. But me make sure that the objects can be sub categorized in such a way that at one particular location. I can able to access the correct object with the correct specific uh, key what I have. Okay. And uh, chess keys with a very long name that contains slashes. So, so far so good. We learned about S3 buckets. We talked about S3 objects. Now let's uh, need to know more, right? I want you to give you some more things extra. The objects, you need to know more. Okay. So what is, so as I said, so the maximum size of the bucket is unlimited. As I said, first thing, the maximum size of the bucket is unlimited. You can also store... Uh, you can you can store 10 gigabytes. Yes, it is possible. 12 gigabytes. Yes, it is possible. 
12 terabytes is possible and more than that it is also possible why because the size of the bucket is infinity there is no and there is not any constraint that the size of the bucket should be somewhat this amount only but no but the objects what you store inside at s3 bucket right the size of the object is 5 tb only the maximum the size of the object should be 5 tb which is nothing but the 5 uh, predominantly 5000 uh, gigabytes okay and and a very important concept guys if you are uploading more than 5 gigabytes in your object size if your object size is greater than 5 gigabytes what you will do is nothing but mandatorily you have to multi part your object actually it's not cloud sorry it's multi part object okay you are supposed to create a multi part object inside it okay how to multi part it if it is going to be 6 gigabytes 5 gigabytes will be one section of your object and 1 gigabyte will be another section of your object if it is going to be 10 gigabytes 5 gigabytes will be one part of an object another section will be 5 gigabytes of object where you will split the higher amount of object size into more chunks and those more chunks are stored inside your s3 bucket clear so far clear guys why because this is very important and if you have doubts i'll also teach you at the last to make sure that why because a lot of students will ask the question you have said that the size of the bucket is unlimited but you are saying there is a size of the object yes it is you can store any number of objects inside the s3 bucket but the size of the objects is limited you are you can't able to store more than 5 tb what you have and the objects will also have other categories other values too the first thing about the metadata the data about the object what you need to know and the tags the tags is used to for identity uh, identity purpose and these metadata tags or key value pairs what you have and for identification security and for your life cycle purposes you can use your tags and versioning id i would want to say that this versioning id will not be covered much here but because this thing is not uh, which, which is more advanced for you for versioning id where that versioning id will uh, represent the s3 versioning concept and uh, to make sure to uh, the objects are uh, category uh, objects are advanced from version 1 to version 2 we'll try to put it in the next slide okay so so far so good we talked about s3 buckets we talked about s3 objects and i want you to give you another instance right so uh, some of you said that you can't able to understand the name of the uh, s3 object i have said uh, let me give you another more instance now as i said s3 is a global server s3 is a global server but i have said s3 buckets are region specific yes i do i have said that s3 buckets are region specific but since s3 is a global service i said the name of the s3 bucket should be unique around global name of the s3 should be unique around the global this is what the concept i said let me give you an instance with this thing i'm going to have us east 1b and i'm going to have us east 1b i'm going to create a bucket which is called as abc and i've created the bucket okay, i'm also not following the naming conventions i'm sorry abc 1 2 3 i'm creating now the bucket is being created now i go to us east 1b ac i'm going to create the bucket called as abc 1 2 3 i can't able to do it it's not possible at all why because as per the convention what aws has said is nothing but the name of the s3 bucket is unique around the global thing around around globally okay but you can ask a question since s3 bucket is a regional service why you why why what may say why uh, why around az is not working so far this concept has been raised as when they are uh, developing the s3 to the next part of levels as i said since s3 has security let, let me give you an instance in us east 1a this is who is the one who created like say he is a person called as a he is the one who created it so he can able to access it but in us east 1b if i'm going to create the same bucket with the same name like the same abc 1 2 3 now the name user who, so let's say he the b user has created it now b has a access to abc 1 2 3 not only b a is also access to 1 2 3 why because the name of the bucket is the same can you able to see the name key object the key object does not define any kind of the key object does not define any kind of availability zones the path of the object does not depend upon any availability zones so in such a way that the user who is not part of this availability zone or who is not part of the region can able to access this s3 bucket without any permission overview so what happens unfortunately when we created the same buck name buckets with the same name 
Yeah, the objects are going to be different. Yeah, the objects are going to be different. Unfortunately, this A can able to access this bucket called as ABC123, and B can also access the bucket called as ABC123 when E is is one A. So it depends upon, like it it relies like what happens here. ABC123, which is being created at E is is one B, has not been secured. Like in such a way that the A, the user A, who is not recognized or who are not facil, uh, who is not recognized to use the uh, bucket which is stored inside E is is one B, but he can able to access the bucket. This is the reason why they made it more clear, right? This is the reason why they made it more clear. Even though the S3 buckets are regional specific, making sure that the global service, what uh, uh, making making sure that the name of the S3 is going to be unique around globally. Okay, so so far so good, right? And if you have any doubts more than that, we'll try to cover the last part of the section. Okay, now let's see about S3 security. So how S3 security is going to be given? Okay. I think so. You have learnt about in the first section, in the session one of AM uh, in this AWS series, we learnt about IAM, where the IAM is the one which gives us the identity as well as the management towards the identity as well as the management towards the accessing your uh, services. Either it's going to be uh, EC2, either it's going to be S3, either it's going to be RDS, anything. If I'm going to access, if I if I want to access your uh, S3 bucket. Then I am supposed I am supposed to give in with some of the policies. If the policies only matches, I can able to access the uh, S3 buckets. Yes, that's the concept. So first thing, first thing is all about user base. Let's say that's what I've said so far. So I'm gonna have an S3 bucket. I'm gonna have um, let me let me the user. I want to access this S3 bucket. Now what I have to do? I should have some IAM policies, and those IAM policies should be having the Like S3 uh, access, so you should have the S3 access. Only the S3 access, if if only if the S3 access policy is present inside the IAM IAM user, he can able to access the S3 button, or else he can't able to access the S3 button. So this is the first secure first phase of security you need to know, which is nothing but user base. Secondly, is based on resource base. Let me give you overview. So now we do have an object uh, bucket inside this. We do have an object. Am I right? There are three different kinds you can able to go ahead with resource based policies. The first thing you can create policies for your bucket in such a way that only with the users with these specifications, I would allow him to you allow him allow him or her to use the bucket for uh, use this bucket, or else no. And you can also give the access control list for your buckets. Where access control list is somewhat you need to know about this nothing but whenever you are creating a buckets you are supposed to give in such a way that you are supposed to provide the list of controls where who is going to access and what circumstances they are going to use access the bucket that is a very important thing based on the buckets you are supposed to give the buckets access control list or else to give you more uh, to to give you more deeper into it instead of giving access control list to your buckets. You can give your access control list to your S3 objects, which is being stored. You do have a lot of S3 objects, as I can do. There are a lot of S3 objects that pres- uh, uh, will be present. So for your uh, S3 objects, you can provide your objects access control list. Clear yeah, so far? Why? Well, because for this resource based, there are three different types. Yes, you, you can able to give your bucket policies, and uh, you can also give your bucket access control list, where the list will contain the control access features to in particular circumstances and. If you want much more deeper into it, go ahead and give for the particular objects access control list. For the particular objects access control list, it might uh, give you an other, uh, what can you say, a deep diver uh, uh, security towards it. And when you are giving your bucket policies, it is very important, very it's very fascinated that those bucket policies can also allow you for cross accounts too. Okay, if you are if the person who is not from this account, from other account, say. If you want to access this bucket, then it is possible, but only through the bucket policies. Okay, so far so good. Now, yeah. So, no. If I want to give you like, if 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 I like, let's say, if I'm gonna have an S3 object inside. Sorry, guys. Okay, if I'm gonna have an S3 object inside, this S3 object, as I said in the first, in uh, I think so in the SRS class also. Uh, so as well as in the first class also, I've said the IAM policies what you create. Will not have explicit denying. The IAM policies what you create does not have explicit deny. I think uh, we have uh, discussed that in the S3 uh, class when we are talking about S3 group, S3 uh, security groups, right? We talked about the ports address. We need to 
all over it, we need to deny it. But as I said, there is no explicit denial. The same thing for S3 object. When you're creating a policy for your buckets, you will have only a low policy, a, 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 low, a, a low policy, but when you are, there will not be any deny thing, it will be explicitly saying. Yeah, this allow can be for the buckets and this can also be for your, what may I say, this can, can be for your buckets and this can also be for your IAM permissions. Clear so far? And what I have to do, one more thing. So, so far, so good. If, if you were up, uh, know about networking, right? You said that I need to encrypt my files. I need to encrypt the objects which is being stored. There are two types of encryptions you can do, guys. Okay, I'll show you that in the next uh, sl uh, next slides. Okay, I'll also show you here itself. Okay, what are the two types of encryptions you can go ahead? Okay, the two types of encryption is going here. Uh, you, can, you can use in S3 is that. Let me give you an instance. Like I do have an S3 bucket. I have an object inside. I have an object. I need to store this object inside S3. But before storing the object inside S3, what I do, I'll be using some encryption algorithm with a key and I'll encrypt it as an ciphertext. Then I will put it, I will, what can I say, store the ciphertext, uh, ciphertext inside your S3. This is the one way we can able to store a cipher, uh, like the encrypted file inside your S3. Yes, it is possible. The second thing, what is all about the second thing? Like I do have an object inside. I So I do have an object and I need to store this object inside S3. Now what I have to do, I'll store this object inside S3. Then what I'll do is I think, but I can encrypt the object which is being stored inside S3. Okay. I can encrypt the object which is being stored inside S3. So these are the two different ways where you can able to encrypt it. That is when you store the object inside, you can encrypt it. Or after encrypting, you can store the object inside your S3 bucket. Okay, so far so good. Now, this is the S3 bucket policies, what I said. You can able to see the elements like the version, the statements, the SID, the ID. And you have say the effect is allow. We don't have explicit deny. We saw that explicit deny. And you might see the star symbol represents, I think I've said in the IAM policies, everything. So star symbol uh, represents everything. And uh, action is nothing but S3 get object. The thing is, I'm making sure uh, if this permission makes sure that he can able to get the object from the S3 bucket. Okay, he can get the object from the S3 bucket. And the resource is nothing but the Amazon resource name with the buckets, uh, with the bucket, uh, bu uh, buckets, uh, what can I say, the path. And star represents that he can able to access any objects from the bucket. Clear so far? I think so. This is the bucket policies where you will set over it and you will grant the public access to it. It's, right. And guys, you can also give it for your cross accounts too. So there is no issues uh, for giving in cross accounts. It is also possible to give that in your cross accounts. It is, uh, what can I say? You can also uh, make use of it. Now, let me give you some of the examples how to do it. First is the public access using bucket policy. Let me give you. I do have a bucket, I do have an object store is an uh, user from not from the same account from the different account from the different account okay now we want to access the s3 bucket which is being stored in your uh, account now what you have to do is the thing but you have to suppose to create a bucket policies here not for the im policies im policies may be different you are supposed to create a bucket policy and this bucket policy will what may I say uh will make sure that everyone can able to allow like the public access what i've given here sid is public read Allow star, you can able to get an object, you can able to use this bucket name. So the same thing. So now you can able to access this S3 bucket. So this is the first way where you can able to make sure to provide your security, like providing the bucket policies to make sure that different account, the person from the dis different account can able to access your object stored inside your S3. Now, user access to S3. Now, what I've done is the thing where S3 object. I've been having an object inside my S3. Now, I'm the user who created. Now, I want to access the S3 object. You can't be able to directly access your S3 object, guys. If you want to access it from somewhere else, you are supposed to have your IAM permissions correctly if you're going to be an IAM user. So, if you're going to be the user, or let me give you an IAM user, what you will do is nothing but you will be having some IAM policies. And that IAM policies will make sure that you have a public read, you'll have the bucket name, the resource name, and the get action as, uh, what can I say, uh, S3 read now so that you can able to access your S3 object. This is the second way where you can able to do it. Third one, 
as i said s3 is being s3 can be integrated with any kind of services why because integration is very easy in terms of s3 and uh, as i said lots of uh, if you're going to build your own architecture the first service what you come to your mind is nothing but your s3 okay let's say i'm going to have an ec2 instance what i have as said we talked about ec2 instance i'm going to have an ec2 instance now this ec2 instance want to access the object which is being stored inside a s3 bucket now here this is the way we need to know about it now here it is not a user from the same account if the user is from the same account we are supposed to give the iam policies iam permissions to him if the user is from the different account we will make use of the bu uh, bucket policy and where the bucket policy will make sure to give the public read access to the s3 object which is being stored inside now unfortunately now the ec2 instance is accessing it want to access the s3 bucket guys i would uh, want you to remind you the thing is in the last class in the in the first class in the session 1 we talked about roles right so here the roles will come to an instance where we'll create an iam role for in iam role for this ec2 we'll create an ec2 role where this ec2 role will suggest that go make sure to use this s3 buckets object now what i'll do something i'll create a role now i'll attach this role to this ec2 instances so this is our other services can able to access the objects which is being stored inside your s3 bucket now cross account access as i said you can also do it guys it's very easy as i said uh, you can go ahead and make sure to have the bucket policy and uh, work on it right now so now let's go ahead into the other discussion the replication of your s3 buckets the replication of your s3 objects which has been stored inside now you might get into a uh, part right the first thing is all about we said that s3 is a uh, global service but s3 buckets are region specific if i want that region like if i want the bucket which is being stored like let me give you an instance in us east 1a i have a bucket called as abc123 right now i am in us east 1b i'm working on some architecture but unfortunately what happens nothing but i need to know the, about the object which is being stored inside abc123 okay how the bucket can be replicated yes i can do that there is a concept called as srr that is same region replication is there, where you can able to make sure that oh sorry it's a cross region replication sorry guys cross region application where based on the cross regions i can able to replicate it now let me give you another instance okay i think so i've been okay guys give me a minute this is not us east 1b let me have it as ap south 1b ap south 1b that is this is us region and uh, this is mumbai region now i am working in a mumbai region i want to access the abc123 so this will come under the cross account region why because cross region replication where the regions are differs now let me give you the same instance what i have said before now i am in us but unfortunately i have two availability zones us east 1a and us east 1b now within the same region i have to replicate it yes it is possible we do have a concept called as srr which is same region replication and they do have different use cases guys both crr this is nothing but the cross region replication and the srr which is nothing but the same region application have different use cases but but keep in your mind whenever you want to do the replication you are supposed to enable your s3 versioning what is s3 versioning i think so i've given you a hint about it while you are talking about that in the s3 objects a contents right s3 version the version id let's see i do have an object let me have it as in uh, python 2.05 a python 2.0 uh, uh bin file or any other files what i have the type of uh, python 2.0 now i'm going to store this python 2.0 file inside my s3 bucket now i have a python now now that um, i want to increase like uh, i what the thing is nothing but now i want to uh, upgrade my version from python 2.0 to python 3.2 now what i have to do i have to access the uh, major thing what you will suggest is nothing but go ahead 
remove the file which is inside the python 2.0 go ahead and you already have python 3.0 in your hand store it but is that a very okay say a tedious way i can do it i can do an another option which is available which is nothing but s3 version i can able to version this s3 bucket i can able to version this s3 bucket in such a way that the object which is being stored inside the s3 bucket has been versioned from version 1 to version 2 i can also go ahead with version 2 to version 3 and go on if you want to know more about this there is a huge concept behind this s3 version right so to make sure to work on this region replication even it is going to be cross region replication regions are different if you're going to work in the same region replication then you are supposed to have your versioning enabled in your s3 buckets clear so let's get into the side what we have so mandatory as i said must enable the versioning in the source and the destination buckets what you're going to create as i said so you are supposed to uh, uh what i say uh, enable the versioning in your both your source as well as the destination buckets what we have and supports two replication one is all about cross region replication as i said within this uh, within two regions and same region replication within one region you can able to replicate your instance and buckets can be from the different accounts and copying is asynchronous copying is asynchronous let's say if you have more than one copying like if i'm going to have three copings at the time those three copings are interdependent okay so the thing is they doesn't doesn't meet to any other each other and it will have only one at a time okay and you are supposed to give proper iam permissions to sc why because as you guys know right we are going to uh, get the replication instance from one uh, region to another region you are supposed to have your proper iam permissions for both for your buckets and if you're going to have a user then the same applicable applies applies for the user too now the use case is what i said so for cross recon uh, for cross region replication you can go with compliance the lower latency access why because if the delay is uh, the delay is going to be too small and replication across accounts same region application the loss aggregation and there will be a replication between your production and test accounts okay if i'm going to have both production account as well as the test account inside your uh, what can i say inside your same region now there will be a kind of live replication we don't want any other person in, may, in between to replicate the resources replicate the resources between them so it is very easy for them to replicate the s3 buckets which has been stored fine now <clears throat> the concept behind storing the objects okay the concept behind storing the objects i want you to give you an uh, like i want to so i'll just take another two more minutes to give you to get your i'll uh, get your answers from okay or else okay we'll try to talk that in the uh, i'll i'll make sure to give you an instance at the last keep uh, keep thinking that we'll try to uh, what can i say put it at the last whether he is the user and he is the uh, like he is the website like he is going to have website i'm going to have some contents i'm going to have the files user is also has files website is also has files now i'm going to store the objects inside my s3 bucket mm. and now it can be another user the same user or a different user from the different accounts or it can be another ec2 uh, other service other instances too it can be other services too now or else a website want to access the objects which is being stored inside s3 bucket now they can able to access the what can i say files or objects which is inside into it now get me a clear understanding that whether the objects which is being stored inside the s3 bucket will cost or when the objects are accessed or objects are retrieved from the s3 buckets will cost okay if you do get the understanding of this thing i would say you will attend a lot of questions uh, from those things get me understanding that whether does does the aws aws will cost for storing your objects inside your s3 buckets or does your aws will cost for retrieving your objects from your s3 buckets to other users or to other websites okay get to those those things we'll try to recover we'll try to see that in the la, la, last section okay s3 storage classes why because as i said uh, you can also be working with big data right and uh, there are other circumstances you might see you may able to store something inside s3 but you may not be using much like you know the fake you won't access it frequently so instead of paying for the amount like uh, paying for that thing 
So uh, what you can do, Satyam, you can change the class. You can change the storage class. And this storage class depends upon, and it depends, like, it, it, it has the S3 life cycle. And based on the life cycle, it will change the according, according to the particular class what we have. I'm not going to, briefly, I'm not going to give you a clear understanding of all those things. But with the help of the word, you can do it. And you need to know about some measurements over it, but we are not going to cover it. Okay. So the first thing is all about the Amazon S3 standard, which is the general purpose uh, storage class where we are using right now. And Amazon S3 standard infrequent access for the uh, for the objects which is not being which is not being accessed uh, frequently, and uh, Amazon S3 one zone infrequent access uh, infrequent access and another version of the first second thing, and S3 Glacier Glacier is for higher amount of storage and to make sure to work with some big features and other vast amount of data. S3 Glacier flexible retrieval Glacier deep archive as I said you can able to store this for disaster recovery right. Go ahead and store that in S3 Glacier Deep Archive. S3 Intelligent Turing, like IT Intelligent Turing. And as I said, these classes can be moved from one to other. But you can also move it manually. Or there will be some S3 lifecycle configuration. You can use it with the help of the S3 lifecycle configuration. You can move from one storage class to other and vice versa. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, yeah. So far, we learned about and we have, have given you the, uh, what can I say? Um, go, given you the uh, part of it, like I'm the user, I'm creating an S3 bucket and storing the files. But instead, but instead, let's say, let's say like uh, if uh, if 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 the uh, if the size of an object is too large, or the size if the number of objects are too large. Can you do it manually, one by one, store one by one, adding the objects inside my S3 bucket, objects inside my? Does it make any sense? But because if you are, like, say, I'm, 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 I'm running a company, right? I'm running a company for last ten years. I do a lot and lot of data inside it. Even can go for tons. If I'm, if I'm now trying to move my uh, things to AWS, what I will do? I need to choose each and every file. And make it as an object. I need to store inside S3 or other database services, right? It's going to be tedious. It's going to be taking a huge time to do all those things. And even, uh, uh, even the what can I say? The employees who are working will not make sure to do these things. But instead, can I have another better way? Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Where the Snow family comes into existence. The Snow families are nothing but and hardware portable devices produced by the AWS in such a way that you can work for data migration services as well as for your edge computing services. Okay, we're not going to give, I'm not going to go delve into the services, but I want to give you a brief overview about what Snow Family is all about, right? In case, like, we want to collect and process the data at the edge, or if you want to migrate your data from on-premises to the AWS, then the one service is nothing but your Snow Family. There are a lot of other services which has been held in the Snow family. In uh, data migration, you can use Snowcone, Snowball Edge, and Snowmobile. Snowmobile is nothing but, let's say, I'm going to run a company called as ABC, which has almost a ton of data. I need to move that company, move the data to the AWS. Now, what I have to do, I need to uh, ask the uh, AWS Snow family whether do you have an MV service for that. Yes, as they do. What they do is nothing but AWS will send me a truck. Guys, a very uh, thing is AWS will send me a truck. Inside the truck, I have to put all my resources. I'll put all my data. And the truck will go to the AWS data center. And the persons who are there in the AWS data center will do the needful. Or the, or the resources, what they have inside, they will do the needful. They will try to put it inside your S3. Why? Because the integration between the Snow uh, family and with the other database services is too easy rather than having it having uh, directly going and storing it there. Okay, this is for your data migration and for edge computing, you can use for Snowcon and Snowmobile and Snowball Edge. Edge computing is nothing but uh, like working in AI analytics and other data, other services where we can't able to see uh, like in the desert or in a rural zone where you can't able to find any internet at all. Where you want to use the services, then go ahead and go give to Snowcon or Snowball Edge. They will try to implement that service at the edge locations. But there is a lot to know about it, but I'm not going to Teach you that. Okay, so that's the end of uh, S3, where we're going to learn about the shared responsibility model for S3. As I said, for each and every services, 
uh, I think so for EC2, I have not, uh, what may I say? For EC2, I have not uh, given you the S3. Uh, uh, so, sorry, for EC2, I have not given you the SRM. Uh, mm -hmm. Most probably after the stars, I'll share that in the WhatsApp group. You can just see the SR shared responsibility model for the EC2 thing. So AWS want to take care about the infrastructure. Yes, it do. Configuration and compliance validation. And the user, you are supposed to be uh, working with the bucket policies, IAM policies, versioning of your of the objects which has been stored inside, and the SC storage classes, logging and monitoring. And you are supposed to work on the data encryptions and press and transfer. Right? You are supposed to work with the data encryption store. Okay, so far so great. Now let's get into the databases. Just give me a while. Okay, okay guys, sorry. Before getting into the databases, let me open my management console. Let me put an, one single object inside my S3 buckets, and I'll show you how to access the S3 object which has been stored inside the S3 bucket. Okay. As so you can able to see my screen, uh, my S3 console, uh, like my management console, right? Someone answer? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Thank you. So go ahead, choose S3, like I'm working with for your better understanding, guys. Okay. For your better understanding, I'm working with the management console. I have been choosing Mumbai as my uh, region. Choose S3, and you may be able to see like the Snow Family, Glacier, and uh, all those things are available. Go ahead. Please try to create your own account. Start working it, and please try to make sure that the pricing. Okay, then go. Don't go and complain the people who taught you. Make sure that the pricing has been gone too uh, gone too much. What I can what can I do? So you need to know about the pricing of each and every service. What yeah. Let's say let's create a bucket. And uh, let me give the bucket name as sample one to three. I'm going to have the AWS region as my same region, what I have, the specific. So do I want to zoom it or let me have the same uh, thing? Okay, I think so. It's fine. So uh, I'm going to create a region. Now, everything else, right? Everything else, I'm going to say a limit as thing. Why? Because I want you to understand a bit from the concept what I'm trying to teach, right? I'm going to have the name of the bucket. The name of the bucket, as I said, uh, a global namespace should be given. And this, the rule should be what I said. The name of convention should be followed. The bucket name, I'm going to give it as sample one, two, three. So everything I'm going to leave it. Like the default encryption, I'm not going to. So it's a server side encryption. I'm not getting, uh, you can also give your tags. I'm not enabling the bucket versioning. So everything as it, I'm not giving anything to the other thing. Let's say I'm going to create a bucket. Okay, they are, the bucket name is already taken. So let me give one, two, three, four, five. Bucket name is already taken. Uh -huh. Fine. Let's say sample zero, one, two, four. Sample zero, yeah. one, two, four, five. Yes, that's good. Okay, the bucket has been created. Now let's upload some objects. Okay, now I'll get into the bucket. And I'll go and upload an object. It will ask you to add a file. I'll add the files. Mm, which one? Let's go with some snaps. What I have. Okay, I'll go with the party rock. Okay. Okay, I'll go with the party rock. And if you want to view, view the thing, I'll uh, show you that. Okay. So, so 365.4 KB. Oh. Yes. Then, uh, what may say the size of the file, right? So, so it's we can able to match those things, and uh, other things like your destination. The key also says that. And I want you don't want to go ahead with other things which is not needed for you right now. Let me upload it. Take some time. Yes, done. We have done it now. Let me go for. Let me go inside the bar inside the object. Now you have the object URL. Which is nothing but which is public. As I said, let's copy this. And uh, let's copy this. And I'm going to paste this inside my next thing. Bullseye. But I can't able to access it, right? Then the access is denied. So as I said in the beginning, even the user access cannot be done. Even I, I'm the one who's created it. I'm the one who put the object inside my S3 bucket, but still the access is denied for me. Okay. Now I need to do some nuances over here to make sure to happen. Okay. What is the thing? Let's see. So I want to go for the buckets. 
press thing i'll check i'll click it and i'll make sure to put it another way for one minute okay so i'll go inside the bucket and i'll go into the object where i'm going to do i go for the options i am able to say i'm going to make the public using access controllers as i said i want to go hit the two important things first i need to make it as a public then i have to make it as public using acl but unfortunately the make public using acl is being it's not valid so first thing i have to make the object as public to make sure that everyone can able to access it then using the access control list of the object security then i have to and enable it let's try using that let me go for the public access let go for the permissions and can you have the object actions i'm stuck oh guys do you see my screen is uh, visible or the screen is moving Yeah, it's a stuck sir. It's not moving, but we oh. can see your screen. Let me reshare it in a minute. I'll let me reshare. Now, you guys, can you able to see my screen? Whether it's working, whether it's good, give me a sec. Okay. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So. I'm in the bucket, right? I'm the bucket which is being created. As I said, I need to do two important things. So first thing, I have to make sure to make it as in public using ACL. But since the objects access controllers is not at being available so far, why? Because I have not made the pub bucket as in public. Only when I made the bub bucket as a public, I'm able to make the objects ACL as a public one to able to access it. Okay, let's do the first one. let's make the bucket as a public thing then we'll try to access the let, then we'll make sure to make the objects acl as a public one okay we have to do two steps and i'll show you the response in each and every step okay we are in the bucket go for the permissions and you able to see the block all the public access let me edit it unfortunately all the public access has been blocked i'm going to remove it okay i'm going to remove everything like everything i'm going to remove it let me save the changes let me try to confirm Let me confirm it. So now, what I did is nothing but for the bucket, which is being stored as sample zero one two four five, sample zero one two four five. Now the bu bucket is public. The same thing is here. Let me rerun it. Now still the access is denied. Why? Why? Because now I do made only the bucket as a public thing, not the object as a public thing. to make the object as a public thing i need to use the access control list as i said before for the s3 security now you are supposed to use the objects access control list in such a way that you can able to view the object as in public thing so for that you have to make the bucket as a public thing we made a public uh, bucket as a public access now get into the object we do have an actions and now get in the object we do have an objects access control list go for the permissions you can able to see the bucket has a bucket on enforce for update ownership let me go ahead and i'm going to click the acls enable okay i'm going to enable the acl for the object after enabling the acl for the object i'm going to acknowledge it rather than i'm going to save the changes now so far so go now i've done the i've edited the object ownership that is you can able to make it as a public now i'll go for the project now i would see that we can we can able to make the object as public using acl after enabling the acl conditions inside the object now i'll make the public using it make it public so so far so good we done now let's see whether i can able to access the platform yes i do so this is how the s3 security works a lot why because you could imagine that directly we can able to push the object inside the s3 bucket we can able to directly access it but unfortunately if we want to like if you i will i will also ping this thing inside the group to go ahead and you can also view this thing in your own uh for platform chain go ahead you can also use this thing okay just someone use it try to make sure that whether it is working good or not answer me please 
can someone use the link which i posted in the group make sure to open it and uh, say me whether it's working or not guys are you there it's working it's working okay so that's the way you need to store your s3 bucket and now since you are work you are the different user from my account you are not having your account itself but you are trying to access my s3 object how i've done my uh, uh, what can i say bucket as a public thing as well as i made the objects acl as a public so this is all the concept you need to know when you are trying to make sure got it fine now okay now let's get into the next part of this today's session which is nothing but you databases so so far so go we talked about s3 we talked a lot about s3 right now you want to know about databases so so far data stored in blocks yes i we have stored the uh, data in ebs volumes yes it is we have stored the uh, in ebs volumes in buckets in s3 and in file systems we stored in efs and ec2 instance store the capacity rather than ebs is going to provide the efficiency is going to provide ec2 instance is going to but so far so good bad do we have any structure of uh, storing the data have we followed any structure like whether we have to store that in columns store that in rows make sure to store that in key value pairs no so far that's why databases now we need to store the data in databases first thing advantage is nothing but you can able to have a proper structure okay we can have a proper structure and uh, one of the important thing the accessing is very fast why because with the help of indices which has been indexes which has been built over each and every value every entry we would say that every tuple for for every tuple we do have that for yeah, every tuple we can able to make sure that we can able to access it correctly we can able to access it uh, we can able to uh, what can i say access it efficiently and third thing there will be some relationship between your database so data sets if your data sets have lot of lots of uh, tables right one table is been related to other with the help of keys like you may able to use your foreign key for relationship super key candidate key etc and this is all about the concept you need to know about in dbms i'm not going to give you much insight but try to get the point from this thing. okay so this is what the advantage is all about and uh, databases are optimized for your purpose and comes with different features different shapes and different constraints and i think so you guys know about the two different types of databases one is all about relational databases and another one is all about non relational databases relational databases comes in the form of tables like comes in the form of uh, tables where tables consist of rows and columns and those tables can be related with other tables with the help of keys what i just so far but non relational databases are other kind of databases which has been more prominently said as no sql databases where they don't follow the structure of key like rows and columns but instead they follow the structure called as key value pairs and they also follow other structures like graph in memory and documents etc etc so excel spreadsheets and moreover when you are trying to put your data inside your relational databases called as in terms of relations you will try to use one language to perform queries and lookups which is nothing but the structured query language in your uh, thing you have learned about mysql if i am not wrong you learned about mysql right a lot about postgresql and sqli3 any other databases rather than this so might be you can also use it and in terms of non relational you have since it is non relational and we don't have uh, built in for specific data models and you have used mongodb in your uh let me say in your projects and for example you can all that's the key value pair what we have and graph databases etc and etc you have to but but how uh, what can i say but how aws is going to give for us whether do we have any services for relational databases and for non relational databases yes there are vast number of services for relational databases and for non relational databases the first service what i want to go ahead with nothing but rds which is aws uh, relational database service which works for your both like your which works for both um, which sorry which works for your relational uh, relations like for your tables where you can store in relational database service you can able to have an db uh, for your usage and you can use your preferred query language for this thing and uh, rds supports postgres sql mysql mariadb oracle microsoft sql sql and aurora 
we have not seen aurora right because we are going to see aurora right now aurora is nothing but aws property database which is being given for you. aws property database which is being given for you. so hard yes has a lot of supports so if you want to migrate your databases what you have in your on premises to the cloud then i would say rds is one of the what can i say rds is one of your uh, rds is one of your uh, solution for that right and uh, aurora as i said the aws property databases so need property technology like if you want any, not i uh, want any open source like mysql sqli3 or any other things but you need a property database from aws then don't get anywhere aurora is the one you have but aurora is not a free service it's a paid one you are supposed to pay for aurora and you are supposed to use it and aurora has two supports like we can support the postgres sql and mysql supports like the queries and the features what we have in postgres sql and mysql is being supported inside your aurora db2 and comparatively the performance is higher when we compare with amazon uh, when we compare with rds the thing is it has greater than 5x performance on mysql and rds yes greater than 5 or 5 times of performance increase and greater than 3 times of performance increase on postgres sql postgres on sds but uh, postgres on rds but unfortunately the cost is huge the aurora db cost is huge rather than rds what we have right and not in free try and cost more than rds which is 24 uh, but it is more efficient okay and the storage will automatically grows in increment guys so you don't want to uh, care about the storage it might increase up to 64 tb starting with 10 gigabytes okay and uh, i would want to go ahead with one more thing uh, before getting into the uh, dynamo db rd is also now so far so good you said you have been seen seen the s3 replication like to replicate your rd uh, like uh, s3 buckets from one region to another region one one availability zone to another availability zone are within the same uh, uh, regions we said so we talked about cross across region replication we talked about same region replication and moreover we said that the s3 versioning should be enabled in such a way the same thing is also available in rds2 where you can able to have rds replications where you can create your read replicas and you can able to create your multi aces for those thing and multi region read replicas there are three different versions over there and these three different versions will not be covered here please make sure that we don't have time much to cover those things now because it's a very huge concept we need more than half an hour to get completed all those things okay so why because so you have to get into it so even s3 as a replication why not rds yes rds as a replication and disaster recovery can also be recovered the disaster recovery can also be performed in uh, rds instances too and very important thing rds is in server service so rds needs in easy to instances backed up service rds instances is an rds instances is nothing but easy to instances backed up service okay get into the point of that now so far so go we talked about rds we talked about aurora which is a sql service which is nothing but which has it has relational database services now get into the no sql database services one of the important service is called as dynamo db and dynamo db is a fully managed highly available service with replication across three availability zones in the region why because one region has three availability zones you can replicate entirely within the three availability zones within the, uh, with the three availability zones and uh, as i said it's a no sql databases it's not a relational database and very important thing dynamo db does not want any server at the bottom it does not want any server to push it and why because dynamo db is a serverless database you don't want any server to back up this low latency and the same thing guys what do you want to go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead like like they integrated with iam for security authorization and administration and you also have the same feature what we have in s3 infrequent access those infrequent access can also be working uh, infrequent access can also be working on it. and dynamo db let's now let's see about redshift so so far so go we talked about one important thing which is called as sql and no sql now if it comes for big data if it comes of big data i need to analyze this big data why because that's what the big data specialists or big data engineers want to do it right they want to analyze all those data they want to analyze all those data present inside uh, uh, analyze all those data but unfortunately the cost of the uh, unfortunately the size of the data is too large then how what is the thing they need to they either want to go for other thing right the first thing what comes to our mind is nothing but redshift 
where Redshift works under data warehouses. And Redshift is based on Postgres SQL, but it's not used for OLTP. Guys, please make sure to use this or please make sure to note down this. Why? Because Redshift is based on Postgres SQL, but it's not used for OLTP, the online transactional processing. Why? Because I think so if you will learn uh, uh, like databases in your uh, college days, uh, database management system in your college days, you might know about what transactions is all about. Okay. So, so far, so good. We talked about RDS, Aurora, and DynamoDB. They used for transactional processing, but Redshift is not used for transactional processing. It is used for online analytical processing, which is OLAP, okay, which is analytics and data warehousing. Redshift provides a huge amount of space. You can store any amount of data and you can able to analyze those things. And moreover, it has been backed up with the PostgreSQL. So you can able to use SQL to query the data which is present inside this Redshift and you can work on it, right? And look data at, uh, what can I say? Look data once every heart, not every second. And 10 times better performance, you can store even petabytes of data inside your Redshift. And uh, MPP, the massively parallel query execution, highly available one, I would say. It's an highly available one. And uh, more probably, a lot of uh, people who are working with big data, they might go into the Redshift. And analysis on larger scale, and as I said, as SQL interface for performing the queries. If you are well-versed in SQL, go ahead. If you have big data, store inside Redshift, store, store inside Redshift and start analyzing the data using SQL queries, what you have, SQL commands, what you have. And you can also integrate Redshift with other business intelligence tools like Amazon QuickSight, what we're going to see, AWS QuickSight, or Tableau, the free, uh, the, what can I say, the third party uh, business intelligence tool, which is available. The next service, EMR, the Elastic Map Reduce. So far, so good, we talked about big data, right? So far, so good, we talked about big data, but I haven't said you about the five Bs which has been there in big data. Okay. So big data is being more. You might say that the, the data is huge, the amount of data is huge, but you need to cover five different Vs in big data. That is volume. The volume of data is too high. The variety. The variety of data is also too high. Why? Because it might be more flavors of data. Velocity, the speed of uh, data from one uh, instance to another instances. Yes, it is high. And uh, these three are the major things. I think so. I have left with two other things, volume, variety, velocity, ver veracity, and value. Okay, you need to know about the veracity thing, the performance capability of the uh, big data, and the value. Whether the data which has been stored inside the, uh, whether the store data which is stored has a value in it. Okay, so these five means will uh, determine the big data terminologies volume variety right why because we talked about there are two types of flavors of data like it may be relational maybe non relational maybe kind of big data maybe like kind of what may say no like you might have to say structured data semi-structured data and unstructured data it might have lots of varieties over there velocity from one instance to another instance the, the speed of transforming speed of transferring veracity the capability issues and value so these five v's will prominently say about the big data feature now, what I'm saying, why I'm saying this, uh, yeah, uh, seeing this here is nothing bad. I think so. You have seen this thing for big data, big data for big for big data. What you will do is nothing, but you will use one of the important tool to analyze the data which is present inside, called as for analyze the data which is present inside, called as uh, <clears throat> Hadoop. Okay. You will use the concept, you will use the technology called as Hadoop, where the Hadoop clusters, you will create and store your data in data node and name node and data node. To support this Hadoop clusters in cloud, in uh, more preferably in AWS, the service name is called as EMR, Elastic Map Reduced. Okay, Elastic Map Reduced. So, helps creating Hadoop cluster to analyze and process vast, vast amount of data and uh, Clusters can be made at hundreds of EC2 instances, and it also supports Apache Spark, HBase, Presto, and Flink. Presto, I think so, it supports both uh, SQL and non SQL, but I'm not aware about Spark, HBase, uh, uh, Presto, or Flink. And it also has the auto scaling features and integrated with spot instances to make sure that 
we can work with uh, data processing, machine learning, web indexing, uh, big data, etc. But now my question is, uh, you have said one service at the last slide, like the Redshift, right? Redshift is also used for big data for analyzing. And we can also use EMR for uh, big data analyzing, uh, big data analyzing. Then what is the difference between these two? What is the difference between EMR and Redshift? So unfortunately, you'll get this question. But uh, the thing is, uh, there is another more concept which is uh, behind it, okay? We'll try to cover that. Or else I'll uh, give you the link where I... I'll give you the link, why? Because I have I have figured out what is the difference between this. Go ahead, and I've written that uh written that thing in my LinkedIn. Go ahead and watch this and get understand about it. Right now, Athena, the next anal analytical server is what we're gonna see. So far, so go. We said that the data has been stored inside RDS, DynamoDB, and Redshift and uh, EMR for big data. Now, but we left one more thing. We already stored some data in S3 buckets, right? But unfortunately, we haven't analyzed it. Do we have any other service to analyze it? Yes, we have a service called as Athena, where Athena has been backed up with SQL services. You can use SQL queries to integrate with the objects which has been stored, analyze it, and you can use it in the dashboard called Pixel. Okay, that's why Athena has been used. So serverless query service. So it is a serverless thing. You don't want any backup. Uh, like it, it has been using SQL, but you don't want to have any uh, servers backed up to it. Uh, data stored in Amazon S3. You can use your standard SQL language. As I said, you can use your SQL language to query the files. And it supports the CSV file, JSON, ORC, uh, Abro, and Parquet, which is built in Presto, but I'm not aware about it. And pricing is based on BI and analytics, etc. Okay. So far, so good. Like, Okay, now QuickSight, one of the important business intelligence tool which is being given by Amazon. Like how you have Tableau or if we have the Power BI in uh, Microsoft. The same thing Amazon has given as one of the business intelligence tools to make sure to provide you a, a, a like an uh, like an outstanding dashboards for business analysis and business intelligence. So it is a serverless machine learning service. I would say it is a serverless right like, because we use machine learning algorithms over here. To make sure to provide you and business uh, like to create an instructive dashboards for you and it's fast automatically scalable and you can all make sure that it has some session pricing you need to work on it and uh, use case is nothing but you'll be working with business analytics building visualization perform head hoc analysis and you can get business in that and you can integrate with rds aurora athena redshift sc and i've said integration with athena in the last slide right you can integrate athena with SQ, uh, with Athena, with the quick site to make sure to provide analysis in your uh, quick site. So possible. Document GB. Document GB is one of the NoSQL service provided. NoSQL service provided by AWS. I would say we talked about RDS in the uh, RDS recently, and we said in another service which can power up RCS is called as Aurora, where AWS proprietary one. But for DynamoDB. Do we have Dyna for DynamoDB? We do have the same service. Yes, we do have. Then the name of the service called as DocumentDB. DocumentDB is nothing but your AWS proprietary NoSQL database service. So as I said, Aurora is nothing but the AWS implementation of PostgreSQL and MySQL. DocumentDB is nothing but the MongoDB powered up, by fully managed, highly available with the application across three available resources. Same like Aurora, the database implementation, and it works with uh, millions of requests per second. And I wanted to give you another database at a glance, but these uh, services are not used much. But for technology advancements in the current scenario, there are a lot of technology advancements, right? Uh, because for each and every sector, the technology has been advanced, not only in terms of, uh, what can you say, cloud computing. AI has been increasing so far. Gen AI, that's why Bedrock, SageMaker, other other AI services have been uh, developed. Now, database is also increasing, but because vector-based databases, and you also know about blockchain. Blockchain is also one of the important, one of the, uh, what can I say, advancing technology. So for that, we need to store, we need, for that, AWS has to have some kind of service, right? But there's no services not much use, yes. But no, they're not much use, right? The first thing is Amazon Neptune. Okay, Neptune, like they have been using it, but I would say that Neptune is used for a fully managed graph database. Okay, they are also, guys, I would say graph, uh, graph database is also one of the important things. Why? Because in your own scenario, you'll be entering into a concept called as graph. Let me give you an instance. You'll be using your LinkedIn, right? 
so you may able to see first connection second connection third connection and first section so that connection might be grow and form it as an entire graph so to maintain all the resources what you have go ahead and use amazon neptune en aws to provide you three availability zones with up to 15 read replicas inside it and for example you can go ahead with wikipedia wikipedia has lots of connections and fraud detection social networking recommendation engines are other examples for your amazon neptune and other two services which is sql db the quantum ledger database the quantum ledger database is used for financial transaction you guys know about what ledger is all about and uh, book of recording financial transaction to provide a fully managed serverless data service for application account free availability zones you can go ahead for your so uh, storing your financial transactions you can use sql db the amazon sql db the quantum ledger database and for your blockchain you can use the amazon managed blockchain you can create your own blockchain or you can use the other public blockchain it is compatible with hyperledger fabric and ethereum so far so if you want to give a glance to want to know about how it works go ahead and start knowing about it but i would say don't um, what may say uh, try it in your uh, preferred use case why because it will cost you large fine so the last service what we're going to see in databases is called as aws glue so far so go you have said that database migration database migration database migration but how to uh, migrate your data that's a major important thing right and s3 has the different features rds has different features redshift has different features why because rds is stored only for relational database services s3 is used for storing only objects redshift is used for big data etc 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 goes on so how to make sure that it works in the single pipeline and how to make it compatible then you need a service called as etl like the extract transform load services and one of the aws offering is nothing but aws glue so aws glue is an etl service where we can able to extract the data from s3 bucket i've given you an example so you can able to extract the data from s3 bucket or an rds you will transform that to make sure that it is compatible with the what may say destination uh, service either it's going to be redshift either it's going to be dynamodb etc then you are going to load that thing inside the proprietary uh, destination service okay so managed extra so as i said it's a fully serverless service glue is a serverless service and uh, you can able to useful to prepare and transform data for analytics and how to do it glue will have another catalog of data set called as glue data catalog which will help you to uh, make sure to uh, make, which will help you uh, help you for the transformation point of view and it can be used by athena redshift and emr and i'll give you one more thing there is one more thing you need to know about it right why because only glue is the etl service what you have no there is one more etl service is available which is kinesis data firehose but we are not covering it here that's an analytical based service that that you need to know what is the difference between glue and what is the difference between kinesis and data fire data fire host right i'll go ahead provide you the link at because i published as an uh, linkedin article to make sure to work what is the difference between glue and what is the difference between data fire host right go ahead and watch this okay so now we have come to the conclusion of this day 3 where well, let's take up the summary of s3 so buckets we'll talk we talked about s3 what a simple storage service is all about we talked about buckets we have the containers which is going to uh, hold all your s3 objects and we also talked about the s3 objects the files which is stored in the s3 bucket and we talked about s3 security like we talked about the public read access cross account access and uh, instances access and we talked about how to provide security and we also seen one simple some we have done one simple hands on like how to access your objects and s3 versioning like how to work with versioning S3 replication, like how to replicate your S3 buckets, which is stored inside the same region itself, inside the cross region. S3 storage classes to make sure that it has different storage classes and can be done manually. Or uh, as the S3 life configuration life cycle, you can go you can be where the S3 uh, standard S3 storage classes can be more, uh, more transferred from one to other, the out the vice versa. And S3 website, as I said, you can go ahead with the static website hosting, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll do doing that. and snow family snow family is nothing but used for data migration edge computing i have left you one new thing the storage gateway the storage gateway so far so go we learned about lots of data lots of storage services right we talked about ebs we talked about efs we talked about um, other things like we talked about s3 now we do have an on premises thing okay we do have an on premises uh, data storage 
now this storage gateway will acting in front of these things between in, in front of uh, what can i say on premises storage as well as other things what happens is nothing but it will make sure to provide correct data to the s3 buckets okay correct data to the s3 bucket but you need to know a lot about storage gateway we are not covering here and we talked we delved into the databases we talked about a lot about the databases like uh, we started with the relational database we talked about rds we talked about elastic cache uh, sorry sorry we have not talked about right we'll talk about that we talked about aurora the proprietary aws database services and we talked about multi easies and multi regions how to replicate it but we said that there are three different versions but i have not said you the definition but because it goes a huge uh, take some time and for non relational databases we talked about um, for non relational databases we talked about dynamo db we talked about dynamo uh, uh what can i say dax which is nothing but the uh, so we'll talk about the dax and document db the aws proprietary database uh, proprietary non relational database services and we talked about warehouse to make sure to store your big data which is redshift and for a big data cluster we talked about emr and for your uh, business intelligence dashboards we seen quicksight is another service and other services like quantum virtual databases maze on managed blockchain glue for your etl operations neptune for your graph databases and dms for your data migration instances where you, you will use the data by dms instances where you are migrating from your on premises databases to your cloud based databases now two more things so that we'll try to we'll end this class today first thing is all about dax dynamo db accelerator the dax full form is dynamo db accelerator so far so go we do have a data we'll store that inside dynamo db but if you think that the storage like means the speed of data which is being stored inside dynamo db and the to and fro operations from storing the data uh, from dynamo db and coming out to the dynamo db is too uh, what they say low if you can't if you feel that thing then aws have an another offering called as dynamo db accelerator where the dynamo db accelerator will be having in front of dynamo db where it will accelerate the performance of dynamo db to make sure that the to and fro operations from users and from the databases might be faster as you compare similarly for rds rds is in server instances right you are supposed to create uh, the ec2 instance should be backed up but if you want an another service which make sure that it works with other higher performance com uh, compared to rds then elastic cache is one of the other services right so how dax works on dynamo db elastic cache will work on rds right so that's the end so uh, we do have 20 more minutes so if you want to ask questions you can ask and before asking question and uh, in a minute okay guys and another info from uh, chin that from tomorrow your pre booking starts for your aws cdp like this is a pre batch where we are conducting for aws cloud practitioner but for cloud developer it uh, we are uh, the pre booking starts from tomorrow right so where uh, like for aws developer associate where we are going to see some deeper dive of concepts uh, like not only with the services you will be seeing the same services over there but with better understanding we are going to go much deeper inside and a lot of lot of lot of hands on inside over there so we're going to have aws cloud developer program from uh, cdp networks with 50% offer for you those who are attending the session will be getting 50% offer and those who are in the group will so you'll be getting 50% offer so the what may say your uh, pre booking starts from tomorrow so if you want uh, any queries or if you want any assistance for the pre booking you can contact the sales team from cdp network so they will they will help you out okay so and uh, there are okay please 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 one of important announcement uh, please uh, please uh, make sure that uh, what can i say give your feedback in your google reviews so to make sure that it will help me a lot to make sure to follow this follow up the sessions uh, for the cloud practitioner as well as for the cloud developer and it will enhance my capability to work on it, right okay so now the thing is for you you can ask questions and if you have any doubts i can able to clear it up for you So if you have any doubts, you can ask me. You can just put up your mic, and you can just ask. Hello. 
yes uh, hi sir so uh, you said you leave a link uh, for the difference uh, between uh, uh, sure after the class i'll leave you the link so yeah, EMR, the difference yeah. between the redshift EMR, EMR and, and uh, yes, difference sir. between the glue and the kinesis data firehose but you guys yes. don't know about kinesis data firehose like kinesis mm -hmm. is an another analytic service which is available in aws like you have okay. and uh, not only the analysis services if you want your real time streaming data which is available in your application you want to stream that into an aws kinesis is the only uh, only thing you have so kinesis has data streams video streams data firehose for your uh, etl purposes and uh, data analytics for your analytic uh, analyzing okay uh, uh, so is this uh, this session is over or do we have more classes Ah, guys, your CCP will session will be uh, lasting up to I think so. If if I don't have to check the portion set, you'll be lasting up to December first week or second week. Okay, that sessions will be free for the developer session. The team has been putting you some offers for this. Uh, so you're talking about CCNA or no, no, I'm talking about the CDA, the second one. Like you can able to see the screen of who's uh, yeah, presenting. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Listen, so there are still classes for your cloud. Uh, what can I say? Um, uh, what can I say for your cloud practitioner? Okay, we have not covered it. We have only covered only the fifty percentage of portions in CCP. We need to cover the other fifty percentage of portions in CCP. It will go around. But for developer associate, the team has put an offer for you. So it's fifty percentage offer for you to get enrolled in the uh, thing. And if you have any other doubts, you can just ask the sales team over there. You can ask them and get. Clarify with the doubts. And guys, please push your reviews over there. So it might help me a lot. Uh, so one quick question: Like, uh, are you going to upload these two classes uh, in the group? I mean, which one? I'm not kind of blue. But yesterday, second class and uh, third class. Did the team this I haven't the uploaded class, right? oh, no. oh, the team I haven't uploaded the yesterday's class? Okay, I'll I'll ask oh, no, this. Sir. So, do anyone in the sales team is available here? Yeah, Rahul. Today we'll upload both the classes by okay. within twenty four hours. Sure, sure, sure. I so, they will upload it, guys. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other things? Excuse me, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, This is a uh, AWS Cloud uh, Practitioner training. Okay. Yes. So in this, we are going to learn uh, cloud administration related to AWS. So mm -hmm. uh, in the in the recent three classes, uh, whatever we have learned so far. Uh, there are still some more classes in which we are going to learn more administration on AWS Cloud. Yeah, sure. You'll be learning it. That's why I said only fifty percentage of things is done. You have seen about the uh, like the management level servers, which is one of the important things. Is IAM. You talk. We've seen about compute servers, which is EC two. We got, talked about storage today with the databases. There is one more thing: the other computing service which is needed for your practitioner level and as well as for your certification level. There are fifty more percentage of persons to be covered. Get covered. Like I wanted to say, like you need to know about the other computing service which is special. And the machine learning services, you need to have a glance about the machine learning services. And you need to know about the six pillars of AWS architecture, which is a very, very, very important thing. You need to get a, get a good understanding of the uh, six pillars of AWS architecture. So that will clearly complete the entire AWS CCP level course, what we are trying to give today from uh, in the series. Okay, that's good. It means uh, other than development, we are going to cover all the administration uh, like training in this course. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. And if you want to learn much more deeper, like for the developer, but because developer needs like better understanding of the services, right? Okay, those were yeah. Developer needs better understanding of the services. The understanding what I've given to I've given so far is nothing but the overview of it, like the outlaying outlaying layer for you. But you need to know some better understanding. Okay, you need to know some deeper concepts into it. But today I've just said what the a single two uh, two to three services for serverless. We talked about Dynamo DB. We talked about uh, yeah Glue, and we talked about Aurora. I think so. Aurora, no, right? One more thing, uh, one more service we talked about serverless. 
but in serverless there is a huge concept you need at least three to four classes to complete your com um, entire serverless thing right so that's why developer needs better understanding of the services that better understanding of architecture what is to be done right that's why uh we have put in another uh session point okay. Uh, could you please just uh, give a clue about the six pillars of the AWS databases? Just a very brief description about that. No, we'll be covering that. Okay. We'll be covering why because in, so if I just give you an overview, right, you can't even understand it clearly. I need a proper one hour session for that to entirely cover the six pillars of AWS architecture. AWS arch six, six pillars of AWS will not really be applicable for your databases only. The entire cloud, AWS cloud, right? It will be working for that. Okay, thank you very much. Guys, if there's any questions you need to ask. Okay, guys, if there's any doubts and I'll be available in WhatsApp, okay? We can just uh, go ahead and ask if there's any questions. So, uh, Next class, we'll be giving you the overview of other computing services. We'll be pushing into some important concepts, like some basic uh, overview about Docker and other uh, services. So, uh, things of that's like, what can you say? We'll be sending you, I'll be sending you the day four and day five topic as quick as possible. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and happy Sunday for you all. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thanks, bro.